Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video, and today we are going to be teaching you how to animate. So, by the end of this video, you should be able to animate something like this. So let's get started. So the first thing you want to do is insert a rig. So you go to the Avatar tab, and then you click Rig Builder, and we'll insert a R15 rig. Alright, now that you've got this rig here, we can open the Animation Editor. So you go to Avatar and then Animation Editor. And the first thing you want to do is you want to select the rig you want to animate. So let's click on this guy over here and name it. Now you can see this section over here. Now this is the timeline. It basically tells you where all the keyframes are. So the timeline is basically one second long. And each of these numbers here represent the frames. So down here is after three frames after 12 frames, after 24, all the way up until one second. So what are keyframes? Keyframes basically store the positions of the body parts. So like if I had a keyframe at the beginning here, it would store where the arm is at that time. If you wanted to make the animation longer, you can change the length. So if I wanted it to be two seconds long, I can make it two seconds by typing in two colon zero zero. And that would double the length of the animation. Let me change that back. So let's make a super simple animation. So let's make him wave his arms up and then back down. So the first thing you need to do is to select the arms that you want to move. And we want to basically initialize its position. So basically what I'd do, I'd move the arm slightly back and forth. And I'd do it for both sides. Basically, it stores the initial position of both arms at zero seconds. The other way you could do that is you can actually physically add the part by clicking this plus button and clicking on the body part, like the head for example, and then at zero seconds you can right click and then add a keyframe over there. Basically, it would store that position over there. The next thing we want to do is we want to drag this time slider down. So let's drag it to six frames. Basically, after six frames, we want a new position. So let's say we want it halfway up like that. And we'll do the same thing for the other arm. All right, now that I said there, you can play and see what you've got. And as you can see, the arms move up and it takes six frames to get there. But we want the arms to go all the way up. So we can drag the time slider a little further and then set its arm position and rotate it all the way up until it is completely up in the air. And we'll do that for the other arm as well. So let's play it now. Now you've got both arms going up. And now we need the arms to come back down. So let's move the time slider back and rotate it back to where it was before. So first halfway down and then all the way back down. So instead of dragging it, if you already have the position stored, what you can do is you can go back to the beginning because that's the resting position, the start and the end position. So you can right click that and then copy the keyframes and basically you can go to you can drag the time slider to where you want and then paste it in by doing control v so let's play that our rig is now waving to us now that we've got the basics down let's make something cooler what i want to make is a scene from one of the batman video games basically batman leaps down and does a super cool pose but since our rig is starting on the ground We'll have him jump in the air and then come back down. So let's do that. See, so the first thing we want to do is add the lower torso because that reflects how high the actual rig is. So let's insert a keyframe. So now the animator remembers that the starting position is on the ground. So let's say after three frames, we want him to jump up in the air. So we select the move tool and then we drag it up. Now you can play it and see, but that's a little too fast. So we can drag these keyframes down a little bit. Now I guess before he jumps, we want him to crouch down into a jumping position. And then you can begin animating his arms. And then his legs are spread out as well. So you can really see him preparing for the jump. And I guess the last thing we want to do is maybe have the upper torso lean down a little bit. And then we can play it and see. Alright, let's drag it out a little bit more, just so we can see it more clearly. And it looks like we might need more space, so let me extend the timeline length to two seconds. Alright, so at this point here, he is in midair. So let's 
have his arms go the opposite way and his legs as well. And we'll fix his legs a little bit as well so it doesn't look so weird. Okay, so let's play it again. Okay, let me drag this a little further so we can see. Alright, so now he's leapt up in midair, his arms have turned around, and then now we need the landing. And then at this position, at, at one second, we will put him back onto the ground. Except we want it to be a really cool landing, so we'll have him lean towards the floor a little more by rotating the upper torso, like that. We'll also switch his arms around, and then his legs as well. And we want it to make it look like he's landing, so we want to bend his legs a little bit. So let's play that. Alright, let's drag that a little bit so we can see it better. Okay, now after doing that cool landing pose, we want him to go back to his regular standing pose. So let's put him back. Fix his torso. Bring him back up a little bit. Set his arms and legs back. And maybe the last thing we want to do is have his head turn off to the side. So let's drag this slider a little more and then rotate his head. Okay, now let's play it. He jumps up, lands back down, and looks back up. Let's extend it a little more. And here's the finished product. Alright, let's play it from the beginning. He leaps up and he comes back down and strikes that cool pose. And we can play it a little more slowly. I'll just drag it along. He jumps up and it comes back down and does that cool landing. Alright, so now how do we use these animations in our game? You have to publish the animations in order to use them. So you go click these three dots and you click publish the Roblox. And you can name your animation Batman Jumping. At the bottom there's a submit button. Now you see this number over here, you want to copy that and then close it. Okay, so what if I wanted this rig to play that animation in game? Now this is what I'd do. I'd insert a script inside the rig and then type the following code. So the first thing we want to do is we want to get the humanoid, so we do script.parent.humanoid. Since the script is inside the character, so it's script.parent, which is the rig, and then we look for the humanoid that's inside it. And then we want to create a new animation. So local new animation equals instance dot new animation. Now we need to define this animation's ID. So we do new animation dot animation ID equals instead of entering the number, we have to do RBX asset ID colon double slash and then the number. And we want to put it in quotation marks so it's a string. And then we get the animator that's inside the humanoid. So we do local animator equals humanoid line first child of class animator and then we actually load the animation track so local animation track equals animator load animation and then the animation we want to load so new animation and let's say we want to wait five seconds before playing that animation so we do task.wait5 and then we play the track by doing animation track colon play. Let's play it again, except let's run it this time so we can actually see it from the front view. So run, wait five seconds, and it should play the animation. Awesome, so that's how you make an animation. Now there's some other important things I'd like to discuss. So let me open the animation editor again. So there's these things called animation priorities. So there are four main types. There's core, idle, movement, and action priorities. So imagine if you had a sword slashing animation, but then you were walking at the same time. So your arms are swinging back and forth, but you also want to play that slice animation. So which one plays, right? Because obviously it can't do both at once. Well, that's where priorities come in. So the four levels of animation priorities, core, idle, movement, and action, they determine which animation gets played. So basically core is the Roblox default animations. Idle, the idle priority is for 
the idle character animations. The movement priority is for all the running, walking, and swimming animations. And action is anything that will override all the other categories. So basically, if you set an animation's priority to idle, it'll override any core animations. If you set the priority to movement, it'll override any idle and core animations. And then if you set to action, it'll override everything else. So if we wanted the sword slicing animation to play, we would set it to action. So it would override the movement of the arm that came from the walking animation and just play the sword one. So to set it, you basically click the three dots over here, set animation priority, and then you select it. Every time you change it, if you want it to take effect, you need to publish it again and replace the ID. If you wanted the animation to loop, there's this toggle loop animation button over here. If you select it, it will constantly play the animation. So let's preview it goes up, down, and then loops again. And again, if you wanted the animation to loop in game, you'd have to publish it again, and then copy the ID and replace it. And that's about it for animations. Now you know the basics of how to animate, how to export it, and how to incorporate it inside your game. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.